Hello, good evening, welcome to the stream as I continue my development of Letteroids from 1980. I think the next thing I need to figure out is I, I need to figure out the wrapping and coordinates at the moment objects go off the screen and um, it takes a while that H just disappeared and the first thing you see is that the moment it went up above that it just vanished. It's because its coordinate changed to 256 and it kept moving up from there and then um, it wraps around because vertically it's more like 240 lines. So what I have is this kind of area of the screen that is invisible. And um, I was thinking that I, when sprites went off the top, they would talk, they were in kind of a garbage area of memory, but they're not really, they're still, well, they are, I suppose they're off the end of VRAM and there's only 6K of RAM um i'm not sure what this emulator does but yeah off the end here i guess there's noise there and so things can collide with that so we have a problem with collision detection because it would collide potentially with the end or any noise that's here any data that's off screen and then we really want it to sort of it'd be nice if it went off the edge here sort of gracefully unfortunately those things are a real pain because they, they slow down the they can slow down the engine a bit well I can't what I could do is make it so that 
Um, if um, the if I have a coordinate of the of a sprite which is say 256 it's sort of or, or off over here at a certain point some of it gets plotted here and I don't think it really matters too much if the if I'm drawing into memory at 8000 because I don't think there is anything there so I'm not going to be that's a bit naughty though if someone was to modify their hardware problem is that to do true wrapping would would vastly slow down the sprite drawing routine although having said that I could select the sprite drawing routine so that it only does it it uses a special sprite drawing routine only when it's on the edge well, that's a possibility Is possibility I could do that and then it would only slow things down for sprites which are which need to wrap I didn't solve this entirely in the original game I left a kind of a blank area so there was a bit of a space off the screen where things could go and you could fly your ship around in that area off the screen and it became part of the gameplay. So I actually don't want to solve it 100%. It was interesting because what would happen sometimes is that you would lose sight of your ship or a letter would be off screen and you'd have to wait for it to come back and then you you wouldn't necessarily know where it's coming back unless you were paying attention so that it sort of created um, some interesting elements to the gameplay so I'm just trying to work that out right now um, okay what should I do? And I don't remember how wide that band was. It probably wasn't that wide. So I think I could make it so that... Yeah, I, yeah that's true. If I keep it at 256 but I use a trick where I'm drawing the sprite starting off the screen so it will just smoothly get clipped off then I'm going to be removing eight pixels from this band even if I stay at 256 so I can't remember how many lines it is in the display was it 240 I can work it out yeah each line has if I take get a calculator, each line is 32 bytes and we have 6K. So if I do 6 times 1024, it gives me a total memory of 6144 bytes. And then I divide that by 32 and that gives me, it's 192 lines. Yeah, so that's quite a big jump, 192 lines. But I guess what I could do is just check in the movement because after all it's going to pop it so if it gets too far up or down it just teleports it to the other side and you're not going to see that because that teleporting is going to happen uh, off off screen like right now it's not assigned value so the y is zero at the top and 192 at the bottom um, I need to make it so that it can go negative um, and probably the best way of doing that is to in the sprite routine when I read the coordinates this is a calculate the address that's the one 
and I'm calculating the address from the coordinates, I can do it there. So that's in this macro, which does the maths. I have to do a multiply by 32. That's the multiply by 32 there. That's ugly. I have to do five shifts. So anyway, this um, takes the... Sprite instance, take, right, so for the particular sprite that I am working with, it's going to take the Y coordinate and I can put the code to try and do this wrap around here. And what I want to see is if, if it's greater than 192 minus eight, then plot off screen green at top, which becomes at 100, uh, greater than 192 minus 8, so that's 184, so greater than 184, I need to subtract 192. So I'll try it. So what I'll do is I will take, um, Right, I have loaded the Y coordinate into the accumulator. Then I do a compare with 192 minus 8. Um, and then if I can branch, if, um, if it's greater than, I have to be careful. Is the branch of greater than that's what works for signed values. This is an unsigned value. Okay, well, it's going to do a subtraction, but it doesn't do anything with the result, but it sets the flags. Um, and when subtracting, if the carry flag is clear, that it means uh, there's been a borrow, it's the reverse of an add. So if I do branch if carry clear, it means that when I subtracted 192 minus 8 or 184, if it's clear, it means that there was a carry, a borrow, in fact, it means there was a borrow, which uh, means that the number, the uh, coordinate is less than 184. If it's more than 184, you can subtract the amount and it doesn't go negative. So in other words, there's no borrow and then the carry flag is set. So I, I want to do a branch of carry clear. Well, that reasoning was always a bit tiresome, but there we go. Um, and uh, this is going to be for a, some local label, sprite address one. I just need to do a branch here, dot sa1. And um, it's actually quite a simple Thing at this point because I need to now add 192 uh, but it's an add with carry um, and the carry flag is set <laughs> because I know it's set because it was branch of carry clear right so I need to clear the carry flag before I add or I could cheekily just add 191 um, <laughs> Um, 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 that is, that's an optimization. I, I could do the optimization later. I just I got to worry about that cycle at this point. Right. If I'm right, what this will do is nothing except uh, when something goes off the top of the screen. Uh, it's not working. As, as we can see, it's it it's done stuff, but not the right stuff. If it's doing the wrong stuff. We'll see when that be. Pop. It's interesting. It came immediately down. I'm doing something wrong with my calculation then. Well, what would happen if it was negative? So if I if it goes up and it's like one pixel off the top, if it's one pixel off the top, it's going to be at uh, two. Ha ha. It's not 192 at that point, it's at 255. 
and I need it to be oh I can't do that that was nonsense no that was that was that was silly that was simplistic oh I, I know what I can do I have to calculate the address I I right I'm just going to undo all that. That was embarrassing because I, I'm, I'm, I, that was never going to work. Um, it's just because I'm moving it around and it's still the same coordinate system. And it's just, it's never going to plot a little bit off the end. Unless what I do is, uh, look at this, this zero here. And there's an 80 here. This is for the address 8000 which is the start of video RAM. What I could do is start plotting from eight lines higher so that zero is plotted off the screen and then apply an offset. I, th I, think, I think that's a better approach. But that means I need to do a bit of calculation here because um, what would be my thing? I need to get the calculator out here. I'm going to calculate uh, eight lines times 32 bytes. So that's uh, 256. So that's nice. Uh, 256 means I just need to modify. Oh, look at that. I do like that. Uh, all I need to do is 7F instead of 8. So cheat. This will shift all of the sprites up eight pixels. I'm just going to try that. And it could it's potentially drawing out of bounds, but who cares? Oh. That, that was an unexpected. I didn't expect that at all. I've got a very narrow game now. It's a, a game in a display that's eight pixels high. Interesting design challenge, but um, I, 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 oh. cute. The problem there is I'm oaring with 7F. It, I can't do that. The oaring worked as a cheat. Um, if I needed to put the value of 80 in there is fine, but I'm calculating the address and then I need to add the start of actual video memory and I used all A here to save my carry clear. I mean that's because I really am adding but if it's eight zero, you can or if you know that the all the bits are clear, but all the bits are not clear here because that, that's basically I think that's why all that was happening. So um, there we are, premature optimization to save on one instruction. I did I, I did a clever thing which bit me there. Right, so this is just behaving as before, and now that I'm doing an actual add, I should be able to add seven F, and now it should have sh shift the display up. Eight. And it did. See how nice that is? That ship now goes zee. off without the sound effect. See? It, it, it's smoothly, you see all the letters there, they're smoothly going off. But all of my sprites are now eight pixels shifted the wrong way. So what I need to do is add uh, a shifted that way negatively I want zero to be the top so what I need to do is oh, I always hated that to have to clear the carry flag clear the carry flag and then add with carry eight and <clears throat> this is now hopefully shifted everything down <coughs> and looking at it I may have actually left that in the original it feels like I mean that's quite a big space where you could fly that ship around and you're flying it around blind um, and there's also the problem of potential collision but I could turn collisions off in that area in fact I probably did so the blind area how big is it uh, it's 256 minus 192 plus uh, minus eight. 
so 56 pixels. You'll see from the H has disappeared to see how long it takes before it comes back again. Feels like an eternity, but there it is. I'm going to leave it like that for now and I can always try to short reduce the size of the blind area. But one of the things I think is, that is really interesting about this this is where I, I had in mind, you know, to write a book on game development like 30, 40, 35 years ago or whatever. And one of the things that I wanted to try and stress in this book, which I never did write, I wrote the chapters for it in the end, was the point about constraints, in the, the technical constraints and how they can actually inspire the design. So this is actually quite a study for that. I already mentioned that as I clear out the letters, as I, you, you know, I'll just run it again because this is what I did yesterday. I got this bit working. You have to collect the letters in order. That's the thing here. And um, because of the fact that I can't really draw many sprites because it's very underpowered, this, this machine is very underpowered, one megahertz 8-bit uh, processor, all of these letters are being time sliced in the sense that only one letter moves per frame. But then, um, you know, as you've got fewer letters, oh, I'm failing to pick up the C here, trying not to crash. As you as you pick up the letters, oh, I'm playing terribly here. Where where are you? Ship. <laughs> that was scary. Yeah, that worked. Um, as you clear up the letters, the letters move faster. So I'm going to try and pick up the C. And um, I initially did this not because I was being a clever designer, but because uh, it was a constraint. I couldn't move, you know, more sprites. I literally had, uh, at that time, I could only have two sprites at 60 frames per second. See, they're speeding up. But this then became a major feature of the game. It's part of the game design. Woo! FG, let's get the G. Sometimes it crashes on H. I haven't figured that out yet. And that would be an example where a defining feature of the, the game design came from a limitation. So instead of bemoaning instead, I, I might write it one day, Shadow. Hi. <laughs> Who knows? Like Fry Fishing by J.R. Hartley. Um, the point being is that this makes sense from a gameplay point of view because when early on you've got a lot of letters and there you have to hit the letters in the right order. So the challenge is avoiding the letters. Okay, and it's a bit crowded. Now if they were all moving at full speed, it would be unplayable. Then as you clear the letters up, you get a different kind of challenge. You have to chase the letters down. And it, it, it's a different kind of challenge. You have to predict the path, especially when you've got the J at the end. You, 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 it's moving at the same speed as you. So you have to start looking at the way it wraps around and intercept it where it appears. And you're doing this under time pressure. Um, and uh, it's worked brilliantly. But it's not because I thought of it is because it emerged from the whole play between the engineer and the hardware. You know, and the other one of those, there's, there are a few of things like this that came from the constraints. So another one is this sort of blind area, which was there because to get rid of that would require more um, effort you know, well, actually use up CPU cycles, right? So for optimization purposes, I just left it in. But then I found that became part of the drama of the game, that you need to pick up the letter and you don't know where it is because you can't see it. And then you're going, did I actually pick that one up left? I mean, what is the next letter that I need to get? Because in the meantime, you've had enemies shooting at you and whatever else, you know. So you're waiting for the letter D, but you don't see the letter D. You, you look and you say the next letter is E. 
And what you're missing is that D hasn't been collected and is currently off the screen. And so that becomes <laughs> a piece of uh, you know, integral gameplay that came from a constraint. And if I was... And you get the point. And then there's another one, because I haven't got to this yet. But you need to have a score on the screen, don't you? I mean, you know, I've got to have a score. So the original design had a barb went across the top of the screen, and I'll put that in. And the, your score and the high score and the number of lives left would be displayed along the top row here. Now, if you've been following the stream, uh, previous episodes of the stream, you will know that these sprites are drawn using exclusive or plotting. So I can draw whatever I like on the screen, and as anything draws over it, it just reverses the pixels, and then when it moves away, they get unreversed. unreversed. They get reverted automatically. So what this means is that you could draw whatever you like on the screen, and it doesn't get disturbed by the movement of things. I use this technique in kickoff as well, right? Um, anyway, the point there is there's collision detection, which I've added, where when it's drawing the... Uh, when it blitz the sprite onto the screen, it checks to see on the clear if it's actually cleared the image. And if any pixels remain, it must mean that there's been a collision. Now, guess what? If I let the ships go over the score, they're going to collide with the score. So what could you do about this? Well, one thing you could do is um, just not allow the sprites to go over the score. So if the ship, I could make it so the ship would reach that, and when it reaches that, it doesn't draw. Uh, but if I do that, then I need to have some kind of clipping of my sprite against this reach. So I didn't do that. I did not clip the sprite against the score. All I did was turn off collisions. So that became interesting. You can use the score, then, as a safe zone. <laughs> and that became part of the game as well. So what do, we, what do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? We learn that to start from constraints as opposed to the ability to do anything you like, is likely to result in innovation. And we're in a world now where the constraints, especially if you're an indie game developer, the point where you end up with constraints being a problem, they, that's, it's unlikely. And um, it, what you, you're limited only by your imagination. And it turns out that being limited by your imagination is quite a limitation. Because when you don't come face to face with constraints, what happens is that you fall into predictable patterns. So this could be one of the explanations as to why it is that in the modern era, video games seem to have less innovation than they did right at the start. It's a theory. Anyway, um, so that seems to work. Now we need to handle the coordinates the other way. So the number of pixels that we have acro across the screen are 32 times 8, which is 256. So that's great. It means that it's automatically wrapping um, in the x-axis. You may notice that as the ship hits the edge, it pops down by one pixel. And um, the reason for that is it's not actually moving anywhere. It just pops down while it's wrapping. And the reason for that is that it's moved on to the next line effectively. And um, I could compensate for that. Should I? I suppose I could. I could say if the x coordinate, if the, I don't think I compensated for it originally, but if the x coordinate is greater, no, 
it won't work. I was thinking I could just pop it up in there, but you see, maybe I can show this if I run it slowly. If I turn the speed to like 10%, or I do it a bit closer to to the thing. Whoop. Boom. We'll just change it to 10%. You can see that it wraps immediately. Do you see that? There's no... Um, so if I pop it up on one side, then on the other side it will be one too high. It's a limitation of just allowing that kind of wrap that one side is going to be a pixel higher than the other. There's nothing really you can do about that other than add a load of... Add some code inside your actual blit routine. I don't want to do that because it would slow the blit routine down. So I think we're okay with the um, two. I'm going to leave it like this for now. So next problem. If I run, run the code again. No, I crashed the wrong letter. Um, I do have random number generators, so I probably need at some point to make these things um... Oh, I crashed on something off screen. I probably will turn off collisions off screen because that's a bit unfair. And on this bar that I put there, shall I put the bar up? <clears throat> I, 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 I think I should. game development now. I think mean, it's entirely valid. I'm going to load X. You just, instead of beginning with constraints which are imposed upon you, set yourself some constraints. Think of South Park, for example. Now, South Park would never have happened if right from the beginning they had the resources for perfect animation it, it it would never have you see limitation that becomes a strength that's a good question how many uh assembler commands would you get in a 150th of a second well to answer that question what you can do is look at um i don't know if i can I will post a link to the page I'm looking at. I don't want to share web pages. Um, I could, but I haven't got a window for that. My thing's set up for that at the moment. So if I look up 6502 um, opcodes, the instruction. So I'm just going to post in the chat a link to what I'm looking at, which is a 6502 instruction set. Um, and so different instructions have a different number of cycles which are required. The cycle being um, the cycle of the clock of the CPU. And um, the shortest instruction is probably a NOP, no operation. And um, it takes two cycles. So if the only thing that you are doing is a NOP, then it takes two clock cycles, and the clock is one megahertz. Yes, you heard right, it's one megahertz. Not one gigahertz, not four gigahertz. One megahertz. So it's 4,000 times slower than a modern CPU. Um, you could do... 500,000 knops in one second. So if you are doing 500,000 knops in one second, you have to take that 500,000. You think about this is technology from 1980. It's still blooming impressive. Honestly, it's for, for that period of time, it was like a miracle. But, um, uh, yeah, 500,000 and you divide it by 50 and then you get a nice um, 
10,000. So you can do 10,000 knops a frame. But, you know, other instructions are longer. There are some of the, the longest instructions take uh, six cycles, seven cycles. There's an, a seven cycle one. Oh, flipping it. The absolute, an absolute address indexed with the X register. Oh, no, I said take seven cycles. That was a logical shift right. So to take an address, a 16-bit address, and read the value, the byte at that address, and then shift it one set of pixels, one bit, right, over to the right, and then rewrite the result back into memory. That takes seven cycles. So if you were doing that one, um, yeah, you, you can't do as many. Uh, in practice, if I didn't have the limitation that I have to move, I have to write all a video memory in a very short period here, um, I could probably draw uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, about 36 sprites in a 60th of a second, 50th of a second. But uh, anyway, I have no idea how many people are watching because this thing lies at the moment. There's nobody watching apparently. So, but then it seems that people talk to me even when there's nobody watching, which is quite interesting. So I don't know if you got that, uh, Shadow. Anyway, proceeding with the coding, I'm going to draw a line at the top of the screen here for which I need to load X with 31 because I need to write 31 bytes. And I'm going to load the accumulator with um, zero. Hi, Refly. See, there's proof. <laughs> it's zero. It's flat like it's zero. And this thing, I have the graph here, it says zero. What is the point if this uh, nothing works these days, does it? Does it do this? Do they do this on purpose just to depress streamers? Conspiracy. Ah. Yeah. How are you doing, Refly? <laughs> Good to see you. Where was I? Oh, I'm drawing a line. So I've got low day with zero, and then um, draw line loop. Um, and then I'm going to store the accumulator which is set to zero to dollar eight one zero zero that's 256 bytes which we found before is eight lines down um, and I'm just going to write that in there and then I'm going to decrement X and then branch if not equal back to my draw line loop Ah, uh, it's almost time. Yes, I know. But you you popped in and said hi. So, that's good. <laughs> you are no, you're not chat GPT. I I, I that's very good. As I like everybody now has to um yeah, prove that they are human. But I predict that we'll end up with a reverse at some point. I was experimenting with uh, the sort of normal, which was that, if you remember, extra normal, which they it shut down. So sort of last vestiges of that resurfaced as something called normal. And I did some videos uh, on that where I was experimenting with you know, 
So I, I personif I turned I turned the um, Hal, the mythical AI assistant that I used on the streams, into a, a kind of cartoon series. And there's one episode where a salesman appears. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not the salesman. It's where a robot in a cardboard box appears, and Hal um, asks, you know. Can you prove to me you're not human? But we, we will we will have that. We will have that eventually. Um, I'm sure. There'll be places that we won't be able to go because we are human. Only bots will be allowed. Um, it's daylight saving next week. Is it really? Oh, it's horrible. They should stop doing that. Why they do that? It's the most. I, I I swear they do it just to upset everybody. Have you noticed how many things like that there are? Like, oh, forgot I've got a microphone there. Hang on, let me let me correct that. You've probably been hearing me. I forgot about the microphone. Yeah, they're always doing things like that. And, Maybe somewhere somebody goes, yeah, I know how we can annoy people. Like a hundred years ago when it was, I've got a new way that we could annoy people. It's like twice a year, we could just shove the clocks backwards and forwards by an hour. <laughs> it's the most ludicrous thing. I hate it. And my whole body gets upset. It, 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 it's terrible, a terrible thing. So I'm not looking forward to it either, not to mention the fact you lose an hour of sleep. Anyway, right, so I'm trying to draw a line and I'm probably finished. I don't know. Let's try it. No. Yeah, but keeping it plus one all year round. <laughs> Why don't we just scramble? Why don't we just pick a random time? We can say we can make nine o'clock uh, in the morning um, when the sun is halfway up in the sky. Uh, it's like... It's not, you know, it's not like there's any stability during the year, is there? I mean, in the UK, um, in, uh, in June, July, it's still daylight at practically 11 o'clock. Why is it particularly dumb in Belgium? Uh, ah, yes, I see the problem. Two problems. One is that I need to be uh, that comma x, and the other one is uh, I'm, if I'm writing zero, you won't see it. Maybe I should write minus one so all the bits are set. Let's try again. Please give me a line. There. Oh, that's a bit embarrassing. The line doesn't quite reach. And the reason for that is that you need to do branch if plus, not branch if not equal. So. I now have a line. Oh, I, you know, in the UK, if they got rid of the... It wouldn't matter. If they changed the clock's timing so that in the height of summer the sunset midnight they'd still have 11 o'clock as closing time for most pubs around here nothing would ever do. in fact that's the point isn't it it's like it doesn't matter what time the sun goes up or down what matters is when the pubs shut and that will never change uh, all right so, as you can see, I could draw a nice line there and you can see the exclusive or effect. Okay, next problem. 
Um, did I ever make the letters move around, change their velocity at random? I d I, no, I don't think they did. I think the Greek letters did. Uh, but what I need to, what I want to do is have a random start, so and random velocity because otherwise it's a bit boring, really. So I'm going to just reset the velocities of my sprites. Uh, in here, everything that is minus one becomes zero. Everything that is one becomes a zero. No, no, only in the selection. <laughs> Everything that is one becomes zero. And then here we need to do the zero and another zero. And if I run this, I should have just the sprites not moving. That's good. No sprites moving. Lovely. Boring. Um, now I'm going to have the sprites position themselves randomly in the setup. I'm holding down shift in order to do a fast scroll, which is causing the ship to go in a circle. In case you're wondering. Um, do I draw the line? So what we want to do then is um, set the the ten letters load x immediate um, num letters minus one and then initial letter position loop. Um, this is, uh, I need to get some random numbers. So for that, I can do JSR uh, no, what, what did I call it? Rand next was it? Oh, okay. Not next Rand. I can get next Rand. I'll ran next. Um, and now I can load um, the accumulator with rand. So I've got a random byte and I'm going to store it in um, sprites, sprites x high, comma. Uh, X, so that's the high byte of the X position of the sprite, so I have done that. Um, I will probably limit the region they appear in in a bit. Load a rand, right, and then uh, load rand plus one and then store that in the high byte the y and then decrement x and branch shift plus back to the initial letter position loop and now it should randomize the position of the sprites if you're looking if you're wondering why i'm biting my lip is i'm looking at that and going that makes no sense it changed the color of the font is now white for some reason. Oh. No. No, 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 no. That makes no sense at all. I don't. And the other thing is, is it actually hasn't changed their position. Stop. What? 
That's got me flummoxed, that is. OK, how do I debug that without a debugger? Well, hardwire. I'm going to load a immediate zero. And it's just a deep for, for diagnostics. I override that and a, a zero. I mean, surely this should just set all the sprites at zero comma zero. Interesting. So what's happened there is that it's only doing this for, ah, oh, of course, the RAND instruction does not preserve the X register. It, yes, I think we got away with it before because it doesn't touch the Y register. So what I'm going to do is create a different RAND next. Um, <laughs> two. <laughs> Sorry, I snorted there. It's always annoying when one snorts. It's a very bit unseemly. Um, um, let's store X in some, I'm going to make it FF in zero page, then JSR rand next, and then you load X from FF again. And so um, this way it preserves X. Oh, I hate that name. Right, rand next save X. Oh, bah, bah, bah. Mm. Rand X save Rand next save X. And so that should now work. It has put all of the sprites at the beginning. I mean at zero zero. All on top of each other. So now I get rid of that forcing it at zero zero and now I should have them distributed randomly. Except they're always the same because of the seed. That's always a pain. Because a random number generator, there's a seed, there's a fixed seed right now. Is there a way that I could get some kind of random value. Mm. I suppose what I could do is use three bytes of zero page memory. And if I do that, then when I run, it will use continue from the previous. So that's a cheesy, but that will work, I think. So we do rand dollar, say F0. This is the random number bytes. There are three of them. and I get rid of that, and now they will actually be random. Zero. 
That's it. Every every day now, I'm probably at some point going to get caught out by the random number generator has a value of zero bug, which means that then afterwards the random number generator always has a value of zero. Yeah. And we don't really want that. So what I need to do is check that they, it's not zero. So we'll start off right. make sure RNG is not zero. Uh, so we'll do load a rand plus zero branch if not equal RNG OK. Uh, load a rand plus one branch if not equal rng ok um, load a rand rand plus two branch if not equal dot rng ok rng ok if any one of those bytes are not zero it will skip this bit, load a immediate some random number, store a RNG, okay, and that's good enough, as long as it's not zero. And so we'll try again. Okay, now we have random positioning. Of course, initially they uh, appear in Where are they initially appearing? Oh yeah, because the initial position is not zero. I mean, I've got some initial positions here. So I, I guess what I could do is uh, I want to write this in because I need to be able to restart the game. Um, you know, once it started, so I can't rely on it being hardwired down there. There's initialization stuff now. So, I mean, um, you know, start with uh, sprites with letters. Off screen, um, load X. Oh, you know what? Um, I might as well just put it in this initialization loop for the letters. Yes, I am using a random number generator that could go wrong with an emulator in the future, although it is actually in an emulator. And actually it can't go wrong because it's just been tested if it's zero, it's going to put it not zero, unlike what happened in Dino Dini Soccer and the Mega Drive, where the code was there but had a bug. I'm not going through that story again. I think I tell, if I tell it every day, it's like, oh my God, he's going on about the random number generator again. I'm off to watch PewDiePie. Um, so let's see. Oh, I, I, well, I need, so that's that was that. But the what was the other thing I needed to do? Oh. I don't understand and ah yes I do if I want it to not do that thing I need them to appear initially in the position that they're supposed to be 
That's another way of doing this. So we don't see that disturbance at the start. And that actually happens if I draw the initial the sprites after I've set them up. I had them in the wrong order. So I've just moved those instructions down and now I think it will. Yes, very good. Suspiciously not very random, I have to say. <laughs> Can you see that? And in fact, in this case, it it died immediately because it put a letter right on top of a ship. And now we're looking at disturbance in the force. Why is it white? Maybe it's that writing off the screen. Oh, the writing off the screen. It's probably a bad idea. I'm just looking at the memory map. Because the problem is that to save on electronics inside these things, they often... You often get things like blocks of memory. See a refly. Thanks for dropping by. You often get... Um, blocks of memory or input output devices that appear in multiple times in the address space. So that writing off the end of the screen that I was doing might be right, causing the visual change of the sprites turning them white. I think that's highly probable. Yeah. Graphics mode 4 goes up to address 9800. Yeah, if if you draw into Oh, it should be okay because it goes into a dress space that's for the off-board extension RAM. I'm just thinking in my mind if... It seems unlikely that that glitch that I'm seeing is going to be caused by that. Um, it just seems highly unlikely. Yeah, but there it is again. I know why. Let's have a look at that Rand Next Save X. <laughs> I have a, yeah, no, I've got the answer. It's to do with the fact I have two Rand Next um, routines. One of them generates a noise at the same time as the generating a random number so that you hear actually I wasn't I didn't hear any noise or did I maybe I did and I'm just blotting it out funny thing is is I don't hear the noise when it's generating these but anyway it doesn't matter this is this this instruction here I have to get rid of that because it, I have it down here as well and that's the way it should be and that one also ends it so that it only modifies the bit on the output port that connects to the speaker. So basically that glitch was due to me leaving that thing in. Okay, that's a bit annoying. It's like, where are all my letters? <laughs> They've all, this random number generator is a bit clustery. 
and so they've clustered off screen. Yeah, I was talking about how you can use bad random number generators to give your game character. So what I'm going to do to get around this problem is add a bit more code to the initialization of these letters. You get these and um, I need to do yeah, I can just try again if the value is not very good. So I load a rand and I need to do some comparisons. Now, let's say that I'm happy for the letters to be. Um, I don't want them overlapping, so I guess we can have a value of zero to two hundred fifty six minus 8. So if I compare that value with 256 minus 8, I write it that way because then it's more clear what it means, what, what, it's, what the purpose of it is. I compare it with that and if I, I will do branch if um, branch if plus branch if carry um, set. The carry flag will be set if the number was bigger than 256 minus 8, in which case I don't want it. And uh, then I just go and do that. Boom. So that will jump back up to the thing if, if we're doing that. Then we want to store sprites. Uh, we stored that one. Yeah, that, that's fine. I've got no problem with the, with that. The second one is going to be more complicated because this is the Y position. And um, I don't want it to appear on the score line and I don't want it to appear off the screen. So we're going to set the limits as, first of all, uh, I need at least, say, let's make it 10. Uh, position 10 vertically so that it's off the score line and there if we do branch if carry set it means it's no carry clear it means it was less than 10 and um, then we'll try again we just get we just say that's not a good position we'll try again on that letter but I also need to check the other way, so I'm going to do a comparison with this. With the bottom is 192, so let's just keep it balanced to say 182, so I'm not too close to the bottom. Uh, and there, it's if it's set, it means it is off the bottom, and then we jump back. So it's like a, it's just a loop with a continue. It's like, you know, for loop with a, these are like continues. Jump back there, jump back there. If the thing was not. Anyway, I think that works. Let's see. And we have all the letters on the screen. They're still not great from the point of view of the distribution of them, but I don't mind that. I just want them to be visible. And they're visible. That worked first time. Lots of working first time. Amazing, isn't it, for assembly, assembly programming. All right. And I should be able to go through and clear these up, uh, even though they're not moving. I never had that in the original, but that made me think just now I could do that as a game mode, I suppose. A, B, C, a little bit easier. D, E, F, G, H. I, J. Right, um, now that's fine, but I do want them to move, so I need to give them some kind of random thing. But there is another problem, which is we, we don't really want them to peer too close to the centre of the screen, because they'll collide with the ship then.
Now, what I did in the original is I checked to make sure there were no letters within a rectangle before making the thing appear. Sometimes it would take a while before it was clear. Um, of course, the modern solution is to have an invulnerability when you appear so that you can appear on top of things. Um, but I'm going to add a bit of code to just keep it, them away from the center. So it's another check. I compare with, oh, uh, let's do that first with the X. Um, okay, I compare it with now, the width is 256. If I do 256 divided by 2, which is obviously 128, but I'm doing that because it's more, it's clear, clearer, minus, say, 64. And um, if, I, if it's bigger than that, uh, I have to do an and here, in effect. So... If it's less than that, which will be branch of carry clear to um, dot initial letter position one, give it a label like so. So, OK, then we we're good and we don't need to do the other check. On the other hand, I should compare it with 256 divided by 2 plus 64. And if I do that and it is less than, which is the case if the carry flag is clear, and then at this point we jump back to the initial position. If I try this, what I should get is no sprites within plus or minus 64, which is a bit ridiculous um, in the x-axis, but you can see that that is actually working. There are none appearing in the middle of the screen, um, at least because of the x-axis. Uh, so we're going to change that, say, to 32, because I think that's a bit ridiculously wide right now. Let's try again. Try again. Ooh, is that really... 32? Thirty-two would be four picks, four four sprites. That feels a bit tight. So maybe we'll go five width of five sprites. I'll leave it like that. Then um, oh, uh, uh, I need to change the sense that that works a minute because I need to do four checks, because I have to check both. So if this is branch of carry set to, to that, and then I need... <laughs> oh. Because I need to check, uh, it's okay for it to be in that region if the Y is... Okay, so what this means is I need to then check, I just need to load it more than once. Rand plus one. And then um, we'll continue the checks. If now vertically it's 192 divided by two minus um, the same, minus 40. And now if we are less than that, which would happen if it's branch of carry clear, then it means we're good. Otherwise, I need to compare that value with 192 divided by 2 plus 40. And we do branch of carry clear.
no, ah, sorry, I just stalled. Plus 40, and it's um, not good if it's less than, which is branch of carry clear back to the initial position. The loop and I'll try that. Now, if I get this, if I've got this right, oh, I have to load it again because that got changed by the the check for the other test. So yeah, I've got that up. Th that looked all right. I'll just see. Okay, to be really clear about this, let's put this back up to 64. And it should really push all of the things to the outside. All of the letters should be around the outside. Never in the center but they can be all the way round, and I'm seeing that, so I think that's working. So there's a bit of a clear space in the middle of the screen. Now I'm going to put my ship in the middle of the screen because it's starting off somewhere else right now. Initialized ship, so I need to load the accumulator with um, 256 over 2, that's the middle of the screen, and then store that into uh, sprites x h comma 10. And um, right, and the other one would be 192 divided by two, and store that into the Y. And we'll try this out and see what we get. Oh, errors. Uh, line 519 plus 10 plus 10. And that started at the beginning. There's a little glitch there. Why does it take so long? That, that explosion on the ship shouldn't take that long. Also, I'm not hearing the sound effect. Um, let's check. Uh, explode ship. Oh right, the Rand Sprite is not with sound effect for some reason. I could have sworn I had... Oh, but yeah, that, the, the reason why I was hearing it was because of the bug where Rand Sprite without... It doing the sound effect was actually doing a sound effect. What? Oh. Let's look at that man doing being silly. Let's look at that macro where it says ran next. I need to change ran next to be ran next with noise. Sorry about that. So what I want to do is do rand next, change everything that says rand next 
to rand next with noise. Um, the other thing then is when doing rand sprite, it explodes ship. For some reason it was going for much longer than it should. Now how long does it do that for again? Save the area of the screen. This is the yes, explode ship loop. Decrement F0. Ha. Huh. Because I'm using F0 somewhere else, aren't I? Yes, I'm using it for the random number. So it's effectively going for a random length of time. I need to start using names for my... So did I use FF? Dollar FF. That was here. So what I'll do is uh, save X equals dollar FF. Um, rand loop count equals dollar ff as well i can use both save my precious v zero page well let's do that when we need to that will be fe so that's a random loop so if i look at explode ship the problem is that I need to store that into the round loop count, which I had a collision, I both were two different things using that. Um, that should solve that problem. Let's try this again. I wonder if we're going to get a collision that way. Here we go. That's, that looks good. There's still a little glitch. It's a small thing, but there's a pixel on that explosion that... That also seems shorter. That's when I turn the ship. I want to see it do a collision here. Here we go. I oh, know that's it. Yeah, there was a little. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But there's a little tiny pixel in the explosion that shouldn't be there. Um, I need to have an initial velocity for my sprites. Let's get those in. Let a position loop. Initial velocities. Um, let's call another random number. Now the velocities. I actually had in the original game, although now I'm using fixed point, I didn't have fixed point in the original game so I kind of fake the directions by moving two half a pixel per frame in one direction and one pixel per frame in another. I'm recreating that so what I actually have is a table that emulates that with fixed point. 
that's the directions X and the directions Y, for which I need an index from 0 to 15. So if I load the random byte and then I can and it with 15, so now I've got a number between 0 and 15, and then I need to uh, do load a directions X comma Right, and I need to transfer that to Y because X is being used. For the particular sprite that I'm on. So um, transfer that to Y loads the accumulator with directions X indexed with Y. And then store that in Sprites velocity high byte, that's the x velocity of the sprite, the high byte of it, x. And I need to do two of these. I need to load the directions y and I store it into wh, which is the high byte of the y velocity of the letter. And now hopefully I will have random velocities. That's weird. It's it's very it's a bit Christmassy really, isn't it? So but looking at it, what I can see is that some letters are not moving and the others they're sort of flickering between two points in the screen and then you remember that it's actually moving each letter once every 10 frames and it just means that they've got nonsense velocities which would suggest that something is wrong with the indexing. Ah, and I know what it is. I can't do it that way. I need to, I have, a, I have to transfer both the low and the high bytes. So if we look at the directions table, we can see that they are laid out in um, the low byte and the high byte separated by 16 bytes because there are 16 directions. Hang on. Oh, I put them all. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a little so that I could write them in a single expression. It's a little awkward. So what we have is load a directions x plus zero because I'm load just to highlight that I'm loading the first uh, the lower byte. The lower byte is the least significant. So that is the low byte of the x velocity and then I need to do the high byte of the x velocity and then I need to do the same so it's four bytes that I'm transferring I need to do the same with the y I take the y direction first one uh, no no w and that's and then the uh, y and we put that in w and so that hopefully that's better because what I was doing was transferring what was supposed to go into the low byte into the high byte, putting a velocity in of 256 pixels per frame, which is, if you look at it, about what's happening. So anyway. Yeah. Some of them are working. And some of them aren't. So let's check directions x zero that's the low to vl low velocity at directions x plus one is the high byte of the x velocity uh, hmm. 
the problem is that I need to actually have naught to if there's a 16 directions I need to have 16 directions but it needs to be multiplied by 2 because they're in pairs so here's a trick because you think okay I do that multiply by 2 but I've got a random number I mean instead of ending with 15 I'll go to a hexadecimal that would be 0f I could just end with this shifted over by one pixel which would be 1e and uh, that would be I'll write this here so this is random number 0, 0 to 15 times 2 like magic <laughs> no need to actually multiply anything uh, look at that it just keeps going and so I still have a problem there with the explosion sometimes taking longer than it should but you can see that the, the velocities of the letters now all work sometimes letters are on top of each other but that doesn't matter let's see if I can oh whoa all right damn Come on, there we go. C, D coming up. Where's E gone? G, H. I and then I have to catch J up, which I think I will. Boom. That's that's good. That's easy. But what happens with the game is that you have to do that under time pressure. Oh, it crashed with something there. That's curious. So I've got some little glitches to deal with. Um, you have to refuel within a certain time and as it gets more difficult the amount of time that you have to refuel gets less and less and then you also get enemies the Greek letters that appear and start shooting at you and there are four in the original design alpha beta gamma delta and they are increasingly nasty Why did I fly into the sea? I don't know if you saw that, but it actually went inside the sea because there's pixel pixel level collisions, so you can actually go inside the letter C or inside the letter H. Yeah, that's annoying that it just sits there for so long. I need to look at that. Why does it do that? That's really a long time. Now, that I had one attempt to fix this. I saw a problem. I corrected the problem. The bug is still there. So we are one bug away from it being a, a groundhog bug. Um, I like those groundhog bugs. So when we're in the main loop here, I load it A with 25 and I store it in rand loop count and then I'm still using F0 there okay now there's no more F0 so I think I've squashed that bug because I didn't really fix it the first time I only half fixed it oh yeah, that, that's that's better. I haven't got any sound effects though. 
That's annoying. Do you see the sound? Do you hear the sound? Oh. I've got it disabled, but I could see that it was happening. But I can't hear it. Oh, uh, it's probably because I don't have the right speaker output here. I think I will ha hit have audio now. Sound effect of shit blowing up. Here we go. Hugely delayed. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's something like a quarter of 250 millisecond delay on that audio. I don't know if there's a way of fixing that sound. Internal speaker, tape noise, disk drive noise, that's cute. I don't think it's got anything to help me with that. All right, anyway, um, what should we work on next? need to have the refueling bar which if I remember rightly is somewhere up here and the scoring and then I also need to be able to have the enemies and I need to be able to shoot at the enemies so there's a few things more to do but it's going it's going well I'm tired and I'm going to call it a night at that point. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll be continuing with this one very soon. Take care, everyone. Have a good night or a good day, depending on where you are. Bye.